week of the cold and flu season, and we wanted to talk about how to identify the difference between a cold and the flu. But also the coronavirus has been on everyone's mind, so what is it? How can we protect ourselves from it? Joining me now, we have the women with the answers. Physician Dr. Elaine Chin, natural doctor, Dr. Elizabeth and public health expert Dr. Eileen Tavilla. Thank all of you for joining us today because this is an important one. I mean, it's just cold and flu, but it's cold and flu, and it can be brutal if you're not taking the right precautions. So I'm going to start with the basics. How do you know if it's the flu or if it's a cold? That's a tough one, actually, okay. because the colds and flus are both viral-based generally, but we would generally say that colds are less severe than the flus. Okay. And the other option also is the bacterial stuff. So viruses cannot be treated with traditional antibiotics. Bacterias can be. So oftentimes we give people the wrong drug for the virus thing and it doesn't go away. Okay. All right. Different symptoms though or similar symptoms? Um, generally, your colds are runny nose, a bit of a cough. Mm -hmm. The flus, we call it a flu because you can have severe fevers as well, but you can get nausea, you can get throwing up, you can yeah. get diarrheas and yes. it's, just, it's just more severe. And that kind of pain, that body pain, yes, right? It just doesn't go away. You can't get over it. Now, a lot of people are worried about just it contracting anything. And so I want to talk about uh, when these things are contagious. So when you have the cold and flu and you are contagious, are you actually showing symptoms? Or does when you're contagious, are all the symptoms gone already? Well, I think in general, we generally say yeah. that when you are symptomatic, you are more contagious. Okay. Let's talk about prevention and your immune system. So this is where, Elizabeth, I'm going to get you to chime in. What do we need to be doing in terms of our diet this time of year to make sure that we are, like, fortified? That's a great question. So there's so much you can do diet-wise. Let's stick to the basics. Make sure you're getting enough fruit and vegetable mm -hmm. in, into your day. Then you're getting all the phytonutrients you need, like vitamin C, carotenoids, the things that actually help boost your immune system. Yeah. So I recommend at least six servings a day of fruit and vegetables. Six servings a day. Can we do that? We can do that. We can do that. I see women there after my own heart. They're like, no. <laughs> but we can try because a serving is actually a lot smaller than you think it is. Absolutely. Right? It's just typically the size so of your palm, so it's not too much. That's right. right. And then a few other big ones, not popular ones, but reducing sugar, reducing yes. alcohol. Yes. Those impact your white blood cell activity, your immune system activity. Right. And another one is introducing garlic into your cooking and not overcooking the garlic so that it's still potent. Okay. Well, I love garlic, so that's a good thing. Back to the, um, the flu now for a second. Can you talk a little bit about supplements, Elizabeth? And then I want to talk about why it sort of um, it hits some people really hard and others not as hard. So what supplements would help? So there's a few. If you want a really potent rescue remedy, yeah. Elaine and I often use AHCC. So okay. that is a medicinal mushroom-based compound that you can buy online or at health food stores that sell uh, professional line supplements. Mm -hmm. And that is a serious immune booster. AHCC mm -hmm. is the big guns. And are you taking that all the time? Are you just taking that no, when you're No, you would take that when you feel something's coming on or when you feel that you have a viral infection. So cold, okay. flu, any viral infection really it's effective for. Okay. And something gentler that you could take for prevention or for treatment, mm -hmm. elderberry. So elderberry mm. actually has great anti-influenza data to back its use. It's been used for hundreds of years. It's gentle enough to use with your kids. Okay. And so that's one that you can take preventatively or you can treat. And you can get it in tincture, uh, tea, syrup, all different yeah. forms. Okay, write that one down. That's good. Why does the flu hit some people? Why is it so serious for some people? I think it's the immunity issue. And that's why you say the flu is mostly hitting older people and younger people. And the group in the middle with adults who have chronic conditions, especially people with diabetes or people on autoimmune medications. Okay, so I want to uh, speak with Dr. Eileen now for a bit about coronavirus. What is it and wh how is it different from the influenza that we all know? So what we've been talking about recently is a novel coronavirus, which means it's a new coronavirus. Okay. Uh, and this is a virus that just emerged and was recently discovered about a month ago. Okay. And most of the activity in the world is in China, okay. and that's where the concern has been. So it is a new virus. There, are, uh, there is a whole family of coronaviruses, um, but this is a different one. Um, there are other coronaviruses that do cause colds and other respiratory illnesses, but the one that we're speaking of as of late 
is a new one that was just discovered a month ago. So just discovered, and it feels like there is so much information and misinformation out there about it because you can only sort of research these things, you know, so quickly. I want to know what, if people are probably concerned about how they can protect themselves. The simplest, easiest way that people can protect themselves from getting coronavirus, what would you say that is? So first of all, I would say that, you know, right now in our community, the risk is low. Yeah. But when it comes to protecting oneself from respiratory viruses, it's the good old standard advice that works in cold and flu season, right? First and foremost, every year, get your flu shot. It's actually the best way to protect yourself against uh, influenza. Mm -hmm. Other things that you can do, wash your hands. I'm going to say it again. Say it wash again for the people in the hands, back, doctor. Right? Wash, wash your, your hands. hands with soap and water. And if you don't have access to soap and water, Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Yeah. Try as best as possible. This is much easier said than done. Try not to touch your face yes. or your mouth so much with your hands, especially if they haven't been cleaned. Right. Cover your cough or sneeze. Yes. Right. Ideally with a tissue, and if you don't have a tissue, use your, your sleeve or your elbow. And then after you do that, wash your hands again. That's right. Right? Okay. And, and I think the other piece, the final piece I would mention, is that if you're sick with signs of a respiratory illness, mm -hmm. whether it's a cough or a fever or a runny nose, best to stay home. Mm -hmm. Let your body recover, mm -hmm. but also, not only are you doing good for yourself, you're preventing the spread of disease to others. Okay, good tips. And I think we're, we remind our kids all the time to wash your hands properly. You gotta get in there. You do. And like, you gotta get in there in the creases and the pads of the fingers, and you really gotta do the proper wash, sing the birthday song, whatever it takes, That's twinkle, right. twinkle, little star. Um, do the masks work? Because we do see some people walking around with masks, and it's because, you know, there's a fear there. Um, do they do anything? So when it comes to masks, the evidence on masks is like this. Okay. Short version. If you're not sick, the likelihood that you're going to get much protection, and this is in the general public. If you're a healthcare worker, completely different set of rules. Okay. But just a member of the general public, being out and about in the community, wearing a mask is not likely to do much good for you. Where it is good as a member of the general public is, look, if you're sick mm -hmm. with a respiratory illness, cold, flu, or any other virus of that sort, mm -hmm. there is some advantage to wearing a mask to stop the spread of your disease to other people, particularly if you, ha you know, we, I, we told you if you're sick, yeah. stay home if you can, right? Yes. Recover, get better. Yes. If you have to go out to visit the doctor or to run an errand, pick up something from the drugstore, yeah. that may be the time to actually put on a mask mm -hmm. to reduce the spread to others.